Does anyone know the name of the chapter? 13th chapter? Okay. I'll start uh, with prayers. Uh, meanwhile, you can type the, after the prayers, you can type in the name of the chapter. Okay? Hare Krishna. Omanyana Timura Andasya, Nyana Anjala Chalakaya, Chakshurum Militam Yena, Tasme Shri Guru Venamaha, Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam, Stapitam Yena Bhutale, Swayam Bhupa Kadamaya, Dadati Swapadati Kam, E Krishna Karuna Sindhu, Dina Bando Jagatpate, Gobe Shubhopika Kanta, Rata Kanta Namastate, Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi, Rade Vrinda Vanishwari, Shavan Sute Devi, Pranamani Haritri, Vancha Kalpada Rubyasha, Kripa Sindhubya Evacha, Matitan and Pavan Evyo, Vaishnav Evyo Namo Namaha. Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhara, Shri Vachadi Gaura Bhakta Brinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, come on all of you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna devotee, so whoever wants to read, as usual, can unmute. So, 13th chapter, right? The name of the chapter is Nature, the Enjoyer and the Consciousness. Shetra, Shetra Gnya and Vibhaga Yoga. So, little heavy. Yes, Kushi, you can read. Uh, so, uh, let me just give you a quick update. So, we are today, very important uh, session we are in. And what is the speciality of this session is the first six chapters spoke about Karma Yoga. Right? And the middle six spoke about Bhakti itself. The last six talks about Jnana. Right? So, no knowledge. Basically, transcendental knowledge we covered in the fourth chapter, but last six again is going to give a lot of jnana. So, now we are uh, having. So, what is Bhagavad Gita all about? Entire Bhagavad Gita is nothing but bhakti only. But what is the difference? Bhakti is in between, but the first six talks about karma, how through karma consciousness we can reach bhakti. And the last six talks about how through jnana we can reach bhakti. So, ultimately, the goal, objective, both are Krishna. Right? So, uh, so, if bhakti is culmination, then why Nana is presented in the last six? Don't worry, it is not a question. The answers for this. In two sense, as I said, the first six chapters discuss how to achieve bhakti through work. Whereas the last six describe how to achieve it through knowledge. So, eventually, both are bhakti only. And 12th chapter, Krishna says how he personally delivers, right? You can see my visuals behind very clearly shows how he personally comes and delivers, right? So, once uh, Krishna is the only one who can offer liberation. And once he delivers you from birth and death, there's no way anybody can come in way. So the last six chapters provide the philosophical knowledge, right? Necessary to extricate oneself from the material world. What is the philosophical knowledge required? Why is the knowledge that is required? <laughs> Get someone, right? So that is required. Why? For anything, you need to have knowledge, right? Because that only will get. For example, even when you want to buy a dress, what do we do? We ask the details of the dress, the quality of the dress, cost, everything we do. So knowledge is absolutely required for uh, you know to extricate oneself from the material world. To get out, because like uh, the cigarette, right? If you tell don't smoke, people won't listen. But if you tell okay, smoke, I mean people anyway in the ignorant stage won't uh, anyway bother. But at least people in the passion state, you can tell them because you know these when you give them the knowledge, you know you get cancer, you suffer. Then they will reflect. So knowledge is very important. Jnana has its use in assisting attachment. Why? Right? Because when you are attached to Maya, right? So now you are scared. Oh my God, Maya Devi is going to attack us. It's more of the way. How do we get out of Maya? Right? For that we need Jnana. Right? So we need to get into that Jnana. So that's what we are doing. Hence we use knowledge as a means to attain devotion. So basically a Jnana is like a subdivision. So if I tell you that 
uh, you know, if I, if I may ask, uh, Pushy, uh, uh, you know, what are you studying now? Not Bhagavad Gita, I mean, in school or college. <laughs> Uh, I am in second level of my CS exam, CS executive. Okay, so uh, so you're in the college second year. So if I ask her, oh my God, then you did not do 10th standard, 10th standard, or you didn't do UKG, you didn't do 5th standard also, what will be the question? Oh, she will Oh my God, ma'am, I finished, Mataji, I finished everything and only I've reached uh, a CS, right? Would that be the question or you will say, no, I didn't? I have finished it, Mataji. Yes. So if you are in 12th standard, it means you've already finished all 11th standard. So that's exactly what it's talking. So it's not like karma is one side and jnana is one side. No, bhakti actually is direct bhakti and there are subdivisions. So someone has bhakti, automatically you can be sure that they have both jnana, they will have knowledge as well as they will be working towards Krishna consciousness. That means they will do nice karma, karma, yoga also. So that's why it's a part of it. Here we are already, we saw, right, nature, enjoyer. So what is all this? So we are talking about nature means prakriti. Prakriti is nature. Uh, so, and next is Pusha. Pusha is the enjoyer of prakriti. The nature, we already saw in the seventh chapter that, you know, is energy, right? So that's what he's saying. And the energetic, who is the energetic? Krishna is the energy. So he's a Pusha. He's the only enjoyer. So even the boys here, that's why they say, no, my Pusha. Why? Because husband enjoys, right? So that is why they use the name Pusha. But actually, in the true sense, the only enjoyer is only Krishna. Kshetra means body, sharira, right? Kshetrajna uh, means observer in the, who knows about the body. So, uh, <laughs> let me ask you a simple question so you will understand. Uh, Purva, Hare Krishna, please unmute. Who knows about yourself? Who, know, who, I mean, who knows your body? Who knows you have a headache now or who is having a stomach ache? Or you are, you I know? myself knows. Perfect. So, do you also know about Bani's uh, condition? Do you know whether she's having a headache unless you call her? Sorry, ma'am. Can you please repeat? Can you also uh, tell me if you know Bani's or Chetan's situation? Do you know whether... What rest no, ma'am. No. So, basically, you know only about yourself, right? Yes. Chetra Nya means you have knowledge only about yourself. So, the soul knows about themselves. Whereas, super soul knows about everyone. Jnana means how do you understand the netra and netra jnana. So that's a knowledge, right? What is the link? What is the body? How do I understand soul? What is the link between both? Neya means paramatma, right? Goal of, that is the ultimate goal. I know it's heavy, but just go with the flow. 13.1 and 2. Yes, uh, Kushi, please, you can unmute and read. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Arjuna said, Oh my dear Krishna, I, I wish to know about Prakriti nature, Purush, the enjoyer and the field and the knower of the field and of knowledge and the end of knowledge. The blessed Lord said this body or son of Kunti is called the field and one who knows this study is called the knower of the field. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So clear, right? So you're saying Prashri Prakriti is nature, Purusha means enjoyer and the field and the knower of the field, it's explained, right? And the knowledge, so we'll see in depth, right? So it's all in one line. He's saying, uh, what are they referring as a field? He's talking about the body. And who knows our body? Ourselves. But Paramatma knows all the body. So that is what he is trying to do. So diving into the first, uh, third shloka, but the first shloka of this, Hare Krishna, 13.3. Chetra Jnam Chapi Maam Diddhi Sarva Chetra Shubharata Chetra Chetra Jnayo Jnanam Yata Jnanam Matam Mama Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, O Shayan of Bharat, you should understand that I am also the knower in all bodies and to understand this body and its owner is called knowledge. That is my opinion. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So he says, O Shayan of Bharata, you should understand that I am also knower in all bodies and to understand this body and its owner is called knowledge. So what is about knowledge? We already saw understanding about this body, right? This is the main thing. And Krishna is telling that, you know, that is my opinion. So Krishna is telling it's my opinion. See how sweetly even Krishna is trying to position this. So you can see here, in the first case, if you see, the uh, Paramatma is there and we are also there. But if you see in all the picture, one thing is Paramatma and soul always are there by side of each other. Whether he is active or whether he is resting or whether he is in deep sleep. 
but the only difference even when he is dreaming you know with, about the girl mani parmatma is there but in all the pictures can you see the soul is constantly looking far away from parmatma did you observe the soul is continuously looking away so this is where we should understand and get our sense of true alert so ma'am what is shion of bharata okay what uh, is I, yeah shion means a family line of bharata why he is calling is he is addressing arjuna and we saw right bharat story it will come bharat rishabha also so basically you all know that the particular uh, you know arjuna is coming from kuru dynasty and in the same dynasty there was this ruler you know india named bharat originally it was not just india entire world was called bharat after the king bharat who was the son of rishabha i have already told you remember he will die yes. he will become a dear yadyat vapish maran bhavam that the talking about eighth chapter yeah so that bharat and arjuna is in that same family why because such renowned people they are all such great uh, people right so let's say that if your grandfather is a freedom fighter right so instead of introducing you by your name or even your mother or father's name they will tell she is a granddaughter of you know freedom fighter so and so yes so the name of the dynasty as well as a bad name both gets stuck right so if somebody is great grandfather or a grandfather is a uh, is a robber what you tell hey, she is the granddaughter of that robber you know he was put in jail you know we tell right so that's the same concept we are talking so here this field so this is the field and the small boy is the owner of this field and what they tell the king actually knows all the fields so that is what they are trying to show <laughs> yes you can read this 13.5 hari krishna hari krishna that knowledge of the field of activities and of the knower of activities is described by various sages in various vedic writings it is specially presented in vedanta sutra with all reasoning as to cause and effect hari krishna krishna so very clearly right the knowledge where did you get all this knowledge you know is radhika trying to give gyan no 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 radhika is just following the bhagavad gita as it is from prabhupada okay then prabhupada what did he do he was giving as it is version from his spiritual master oh my okay agreed uh, saraswati uh, right bhakti vedanta saraswati okay from who did did he give no no so what did they do they were giving verbatim yeah, whatever they told the same word ditto they were telling they did not add anything or modify because we all want to hear krishna's word right we don't want to hear modified version so that is where even this is spoken in vedanta sutra veda anta means end of veda that means ultimately that is the essence of the complete veda so that is what is bhagavad gita right so this is something which we already saw earlier and also in the bridge class but i will uh, tell you these are various levels right maya so somebody is just in that platform let's take animals what will they think they will only be thinking of eating sleeping mating that's it nothing beyond that that's the lowest planet pranamaya in fact annamaya is much lower than animal also right you take at least an animal will become a little active okay somebody will attack me i'll run little bit the concept of conscience is there pranamaya but annamaya typically you take the very low end animals you know they will not even understand that right? so what is jnanamaya it's the mind Uh, you know application of knowledge it's called jnana also spiritual knowledge will also come under this for example i am not the body i am the soul right we learned this in the second chapter now if i am going to now uh, let's take chetan i am going to tell chetan you're just not focusing okay you know i don't even think you're concentrating you know and don't assume me but then think i'm teacher right you will eat whether it's true or false in case he is sh- being shouted in the front of the entire classroom he'll feel bad right mom or father shouts and not just see all of us do so why because we are in that bodily uh, platform still right you still can't think i'm not the body i am the soul that is the jnanamaya platform right jnana sorry jnana is what i spoke right jnana is knowledge understanding and just whatever i saw vijnanamaya vijnanamaya is application of the body so i am the body is the jnanamaya platform which is i am the body you know only that right it's just a theoretical i am not the body i am the soul you learned in second chapter but you can't implement that is what is jnana right your knowledge is you know it it's only at the book you can't implement it right but vijnana maya is if you take you know any uh, anyone for that matter you know let's take uh, sadhu right adira you go scold him he will not bother he will not have any impact right because he is understood he is not the body he is the soul he is in the vijnana maya platform i just told you the story of jada bharata 
when he was reborn as a deer and his next generation he was born uh, he, as jala barada right and he remembered everything and it did not he was in the vinyana maya platform he knew and therefore he was not at all taking anything in a wrong sense whether it's hatred or good even if people insult one more example is even prabhupada so many people uh, you know sometimes talk even rubbish uh, you know something or other i have not seen god why i am not able to see god i am a show me god he is so in vinyana platform that he has not taken any offense or he doesn't do that's, that's the difference ananda maya ananda maya is somebody at a very different level like he is like full of um, uh bliss right and when does he do that it is only when the soul is happy all of us will get into anandam for a short while but the platform is like when you are permanently in the platform right so vinyanam also we have but it depends on who it is if the neighbor is shouting we are in the vinyanam something is telling how do i care but technically we feel very offended otherwise right so 13.6 and 7 talks about very important thing about all the material uh, things yeah please go ahead read Hare Krishna the five great elements false ego intelligence the unmanifested the 10 senses the mind the five sense objects desire hatred happiness distress the aggregate the life symptoms and convictions all these are considered in summary to be the field of activities and its interactions Hare Krishna Hey, Hare Krishna. The five great elements, right? The false ego, intelligence, unmanifested, ten senses. So basically, let me explain to you one by one. The five great elements we all uh, know. What is that? Bhumi, apo, mano, va. Hey, bhumi, apo, mano, va. It's all the five, right? Earth, water, fire, ether, air. We already saw this, right? Bhumi, apo, nalo, va. You, kambuti, mano, eva, cha, ahang, karami, ti, ema, bina, prakruti, rishta, da. We've already seen that. So that's the five elements. The body is made out of the five. now the soul is covered by this body but between the soul and the body there is something called the the body which you see is called the gross body inside in between both there is something called the subtle body which is a false ego intelligence and the mind right so these are the elements so the unmanifested is anything unmanifested is what you can't see so the three things right mode of passion mode of goodness and mode of mode of ignorance thank you so much ignorance right so this is the unmanifested and the next one is the ten senses so what are the 10 senses you have five working senses and five knowledge acquiring senses what are the five working senses you know the what you see the eyes ears nose tongue and touch right and the knowledge these are the knowledge acquiring senses and the working senses are hands legs right genital so these are the things which are the uh, which whatever is put into action right these are the senses if you want in detail we'll see that in the Veda based this particular shloka, or you can read, and if you have doubt, you can tell. So it will be slowly written one by one. All this is covered. Then after that, this year, hatred, happiness, distress, aggregate, life symptom are all coming under the this category. So this is a long list of uh, uh, you know what are the qualities, and we we'll cover all this eighteen thirteen point eight and to twelve Hari Krishna. ஆமாஷாத்தேஷு வைராம் அனகாரேன அசக்தீரிஷ்வந்தோபிச்சாரிணிவிதேஷி அராதீர்ஜனசிஷ்ணா humility pridelessness non violence tolerance simplicity approaching a bona fide spiritual master 
cleanliness, steadiness, self-control, renunciation of the objects of sense gratification, absence of false ego, the perception of the evil of birth, death, old age and disease, detachment, freedom from entanglement with children, wife, home and the rest, even-mindedness amid pleasant and unpleasant events, constant and unalloyed devotion to me, aspiring to live in a solitary place, detachment from the general mass of people, accepting the importance of self-realization and philosophical search for the absolute truth. All these I declare to be knowledge. And besides this, whatever there may be is ignorance. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So very clearly he is giving the whole list, right? From the 8 to 12 chapters. So everything. And let's put it in a summary so that it's easier. Right? Whatever we read. Hare Krishna. And thanks for reading so patiently. Humanity. Right? Amritvam. So humanity means it's not, you know, what we talk. Oh, I'm very human. You know, whatever food is remaining, I don't put it in the dustbin. I'm very, I have so much humanity. You know, I go and give it to the watchman down or I put it to the stray dog. You know, I don't like to waste food. You know, I'm very human. This is the current definition. Right? So, humanity actually means what I just spoke sometime back. Whoever insults you, you are in the not jnana, but vinyana maya. It doesn't bother you at all. You know, you are in that level. It's just adambitvam, right? Adambitvam is pridelessness. You understand that you're not the body. So, therefore, you know, you don't have a pride. Hey, you know what? I have 10 dresses, but he has or she has only two dresses, right? Absolutely no prideness. Prideness. Non-violence has two parts, right? Ahimsa means it's not that I'm not coming. Because if Ahimsa is spoken, then Bhagavad Gita, how many times Krishna is telling Arjuna, Yutta, Yutta, Yuktishva, Yuktishva, Yutta, right? So there is one uh, particular shloka where he goes on with that same thing. So Krishna, there is no non violence or non violence. It's all about doing everything what Krishna likes, right? And non violence means Ahimsa. Ahimsa means you, someone who can actually, uh, one is not just violence, but even thinking is wrong. Today, what do we think? Bad you won't be affected. Because in Kali Yuga, only what comes out in the form of verbal or non-verbal is taken into task. However, this doesn't mean that, you know, if you're non-violent, uh, you're great. It means that even thinking, you should not think wrong, even though you're not punished, right? Because your thoughts have an impact on action. So that is what it is. Tolerance is nyanti you. That is, be uh, practice to bear insult and dishonor, right? You tolerate. And that's what uh, Krishna keeps telling, right? Whatever it is, please tolerate, is what he tells very clearly. Simplicity is arjavam. So straightforward that you can even disclose the truth to your enemy. Can you give me one example of the simplicity? You can type in the chat while I come back to this at the end. The most important is archarya upasanam. So that means serving the archarya. It's absolute, it's a must, right? Just like how you tell water is a must. No, 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 I'll manage with milk itself. No, no, but it's must, right? So even if I give you any liquid, you will tell, no, no, it's must. Uh, cleanliness is saucham, right? It's both yama and yama, internal and external cleanliness. Steadiness, thirayam. Stadium is very important because to progress. Today you have done one round. After one month, you'll do four round. Another few months, you'll do eight round and you'll reach 16. Right? If you don't have the steadiness, you won't progress, right? You'll be like one day you do 16, another day you'll do six. Another day you will not do, right? Self-control is Atma Vinikram. Reject anything which is not favorable to Krishna and whatever is favorable to you, accept. Renunciation of sense objects is Indriya Aktenu Vairagyam. Not to cater to unnecessary demands, right? To do only what the body likes. That's what is important. Absence of false ego is Ahankar. Reject the concept of I'm not the body, I'm the soul. And accept that you are the servant of Krishna. Once you accept that, you know that your platform, my platform are same. Perceptions of evil. Jannam Vritu Jarabhyat. We don't want all this, right? This is Dukalayam Ashashvatam. So let's get out of that particular Dukalayam. Detachment means is different from entanglement, right? So whenever they say detachment, ready to sacrifice everything for Krishna. Right? Krishna tells, give up this, yes. We will know a lot of people who will change so much, right? So some people uh, are hardcore eaters of uh, you know, uh, onion uh, or tea, for instance. And many have said, okay, I will not even do a tea. So those kind of things, okay? And uh, no entanglement with wife does not mean affection. So let me just take an example. We come across many times mothers or fathers telling, normal is okay, I like you to wear this dress, that's okay. 
but then you know hey i wanted to become an engineer or doctor okay because i wanted to be one but i could not so i wanted to see my dreams through hey you want to become one please become one right why do you really shove it on my throat and tell me to do that so what happens is this is what happens when you get over attached because you think our children or whatever you get a feeling that they are part and parcel of us fine you know but you have to give them space no no not required it's my child i will decide whom what dress she should wear what color she has to wear or what it's good to have an opinion it's a very healthy thing but not dictatorship okay you must do yes you should have rules parents should have you have to give this time you have to come back by this time that's healthy but you can't tell hey you don't wear the shade of pink i don't like you wearing it or no that's not accepted at all right so you should give the freedom so that is what manners right so practice how they can all do krishna conscious right so do things that so it's not renunciation many get confused because krishna never talks about he says both may be equal but i would support non renunciation right stay with your duty evil mind even mindedness means always treat everyone equally good bad rich fail pass money every time unalloyed devotion service nine stages of bhakti very very important nine devotional uh, nine process sorry nine process of bhakti so this is absolutely important it's uh, we've seen this right shavanam kirtanam vishnu samaranam pada sevanam atma nivedanam sakyam dasyam and uh, vatsalya right so i mean typically all of the uh, I, I, there is only one who has practiced everything that is lakshmi devi yeah nothing else is it oh. yeah please go ahead and read mahare krishna hari krishna i shall now explain the knowable knowing which you will taste the eternal brahman the spirit beginningless and subordinate to me lies beyond the cause and effect of this material world hari krishna i shall explain the knowledge knowing which you will be you will taste the eternal right so brahman the spirit beginningless and subordinate to me lies under beyond the cause and effect of this material world so very clearly he says right i am going to explain about the brahma so that is what it is so kuba can you can start reading from the next hari krishna so he very clearly and uh, uh, thanks kushi for reading hari krishna i shall um, now explain right is going to give everything and brahma refers to various meanings not just brahma but he is talking about brahman the spirit sarvendriya guna basham sarvendriya vivarjitam asaktam sarva vrikchaiva ियल <laughs> Source of all senses, we know this, right? Whereas he is unattached; he doesn't meet. He doesn't. Many of them tell why problems come only to me because Krishna is there; he is the maintainer. But he doesn't tell you rule book. Otherwise, we will become robbers, right? If we have to just follow what if Krishna is telling word to word, it's it will be guidance. But if Krishna makes us do everything, then we will become robbers, right? That's the difference. Uh, yes, please go ahead. Thirteen point six. Hare Krishna. The supreme truth exists both internally and externally. in the moving and non moving he is beyond the power of the material senses to see or to know all the far far away he is also near to all hari krishna hari krishna so it's a very beautiful uh, verse right it is also mentioned in ishod say tade jati tanne jati tatture tadvanshike tadantarasya sarvasya anu sarvasay vayata which is the uh, you know the The sloka. What happens is very clearly he says that somebody is far, but near, right? He is uh, everywhere. He is inside also. He is all looking like it's called achinta veda aveda philosophy, which means these look like apparent contradictions, but they are not, right? Because for Krishna, everything is possible. It's the same thing here. So we go on to thirteen point eighteen. Yeah. Please read. He is the source of light in all luminous objects. He is beyond the darkness of matter and is unmanifested. He is knowledge. He is the object of knowledge, and he is the goal of knowledge. He is situated in everyone's heart. Hare Krishna. Let's see whatever you are telling is there, right? So he is the source, right? Source is Krishna. You can see Krishna in the picture, and the uh, presence of light is important. We saw right in this video of. Uh, 
uh, Albert Einstein, that what did he say? He says that there's nothing called darkness, but the absence of uh, light is what is darkness. So he says he's beyond darkness of matter and manifest. And that's specific beyond the Maya Shikri. He is knowledgeable, he is beyond know, and he is object of knowledge. We have to know about Krishna, Yashmi, and he is a guru, right? Basically, everything, starting, ending, middle, everything, he is the one. He is situated in everyone's heart. And what is the name of the Krishna who is situated in everybody's heart called? Come on. Shiro Dakshaya Vishnu. Yes, thank you so much. I am so proud of you. Thanks, Satan. Shiro Dakshaya Vishnu. Yes, the Paramatma of the Super Soul is Shiro Dakshaya Vishnu. 13.19. Thus, the field of activity, the body, knowledge, and the knowable have been summarily described by me. Only my devotees can understand this thoroughly and thus attain to my nature. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, he says that the field of the activity is the body, knowledge, and the knowable. Whatever we write, right? Only my devotees can understand. Not anybody else cannot understand. Only the devotees can understand. And he satisfies that. 13.20. Material nature and the living entities should be understood to be beginningless. Their transformation and the modes of matter are products of material nature. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Material nature and the living entities should be understood to be beginningless. Everything, right? Because if we start thinking when did we, when were we born and we start searching for the souls, we'll never be able to reach. It's going to be a headache. So that's why they say everything is beginningless. And the transformation and the modes of the matter are a product of material nature. So whatever we are saying, right, it is very much the, the, the transformation modes, all are the product of matter. So very clearly he says this, right? So everything is built into by matter. Right? So this is the one. Right? Nature is said to be the cause of all material activities and effects, whereas the living entity is the cause of the various suffering and enjoyments in this world. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna very clearly says nature is said to be the cause of all material activities. Cause effect, right? We saw that. But living entity uh, is the cause of the very suffering. All work. So basically in one line, see nature is created because it's a cause effect, right? Whatever it's created is for the purpose of us. But the living entities, whatever has happened, is based off the result of whatever. What body we got is based on what we want to enjoy. For example, someone wants to sleep, better to have the body of a bear because bear goes into hibernation. You won't be able to enjoy. Uh, yes, Vani, Hare Krishna. If it's a doubt, please skip to the end. But if you want to read, you can go ahead and read after I chat. Hare Krishna. Purusha prakriti stodi, bhute prakriti jantuna, karanam puna sandosha, sadasat yogi janmashu. Hare Krishna. The living entity is material nature, thus follows the ways of life. Enjoying the three modes of nature, this is due to his association with that material nature. Thus he meets with God with good and evil amongst various species. Hare Krishna. So everyone wants to enjoy, right, this nature, get into trouble. You will get entangled, not entangled. Right? And uh, so that is what he is uh, talking about. And money, you're okay with it, not to hold the question to the end. If it's too confusing, you can type in the chat. I'll read as I you know, explain. Hare Krishna. 13.23 Upadrasthanumantacha Yet in this body, there is another, a transcendental enjoyer who is the Lord, the supreme proprietor who exists as the overseer and permitter and who is known as the super soul. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So we already saw, right? Krishna is so special that he comes as super soul in every body. Even if it is a worm in the stool, he is accompanying. Yes, 13.24. One who understands this philosophy concerning material nature, the living entity and the interaction of the modes of nature is sure to attain liberation. He will not take birth here again, regardless of his present position. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So one who understands the philosophy, right? That living entity, interaction, the mood, everything, 
surely he will get liberated right? he is not going to come back again again to the kingdom of birth so that is the speciality he is talking about so he will never come back again to this earth is what he says hari krishna yes ma'am go ahead the that super soul is perceived by some through meditation by some through the cultivation of knowledge and by others through working without fruitive desire hari krishna hari krishna this one i understood so what we are talking about is okay i'll come to this in one second honey the super soul is perceived by some see various people right the super soul you know very clearly ashtanga yogis what do they do they uh, pray on the super soul right they meditate on the super soul Uh, but some of them by cultivating you know jnani what do they do they actually jnani yogis they think about transcendental knowledge they believe in that whereas karma yogi what will do will do nice karma karma yoga so anyway some each of them perceives them through different means and uh, you know and coming back before we read this just one second so coming back to your doubt pani so it is uh, uh, nature so the nature is this external energy which is a inferior energy we saw in seventh chapter so what they are saying is why is this nature created it's basically what's called the it is a cause of the material activities means we have to come here right so there should be a basic thing so if you are cooking man you know if you are going to tell your mom mom i am going to cook you know what what are you going to cook she will tell so i have decided you know tomorrow i am going to make uh, you know let's say uh, puri and uh, sabji right so what will your mom I will tell okay no problem beta you know i'll keep everything you can do cooking so what she will do she'll keep gas stuff she'll keep a lighter right and they'll keep she'll keep some vessels for you she's going to give you that batter she's going to keep water for you she's going to keep everything right everything required for cooking including a little bit of salt whatever potato whatever is required or will she just tell oh very good beta go ahead and cook and i'm giving you this entire room so it's not going to help right so likewise what is happening is krishna this jivatma is happening i don't want you i want to independently be having my own life so what the krishna is saying no problem the material activities whatever no is there is no particular karma and all into it so everywhere they created he is created a sun he is created moon he is created all this for cause effect so that you can manage with the world right your day to day activities has to not so this is the external energy of krishna it is also called inferior energy because the, krishna is not desperate that the uh, you know Uh, the mountain here he has to carry and put it there no he says okay keep the mountain river no i have enough water right i have ganga it's not that i have to take typically the water from there i'm telling ganga to come here it's not that he is so desperate oh this beautiful girl i need no nothing of that sort is what he is saying yes my you can go i bani i hope i have addressed this question hari krishna uh, 30.26 i think go ahead again there are those who although not conversant in spiritual knowledge begin to worship the supreme person upon hearing about him from others because of their tendency to hear from authorities they also transcend the path of birth and death hari krishna nice one so he says that although not conversant right spiritual knowledge example is this is the, does anyone know in the picture who it is remember i told you the birth and death video which we saw on the 7th you know beginning before the 8th chapter uh, end of the 7th chapter so that video was based on this preaching and he is called kapila muni he is one of the incarnation of krishna and his mother is devayuti devayuti is uh, uh, you know she gives complete you know and she wants to know about how to get liberated vishnu so kapila is personally teaching her you know the various process and all that and he wrote everything in third chapter you know it's like the sankhya philosophy right and not the body and the soul so entire philosophy is taught by him right because of the tendency to hear from authority what are they telling we also saw it tat vidhi padi patena pani prashnena sevaya even upadeshe ke nana jnani sa sarva dashina earlier if you saw uh, we saw something called accepting the spiritual master when we saw the huge shloka with lot of qualities right so that's a must so you have to hear from authority Not from Tom, we can have it. Yeah, whatever. Thirteen point two seven. Hare Krishna. Please go ahead and read now. Oh, chief of the Bharatas, whatever you say in existence, both moving and unmoving, is only the combination of the field of activities and the knower of the field. Hare Krishna. Right. So he says, moving, not moving. Moving is Shara, and not moving is Akshara. Right. So he says the whatever you see, right, around you. everything is what is the field of act whatever is happening is either the body 
or it is the knower of the body. So give me the soul, give me the body. It's the only thing which you are going to see. 13.28 Hare Krishna. Shamam Sarveshu Teshu Ishtantam Parameshwaram Mainashya Swan Vina Sham Tam Yaha Pashyati Sa Pashyati. Pashyati means see. Right? So we saw so far here, right? Shunu. Now we are talking about Pashyati, right? Sees. He's talking about seeing. Yeah. Please. Go ahead. One who sees the super soul accompanying the individual soul in all bodies and who understands that neither the soul nor the super soul is ever destroyed actually sees. Hare Krishna. One who sees the super soul accompanying the individual soul in all bodies, right? Anyone who sees the super soul who accompanies the individual soul, right? So we know, you can see who understands that. Will they turn this face away from the super soul? He will not do it. If you know that both are accompanied by each other, will he insult another person? Because if he insults, he knows, oh my God, he's going to affect the super soul. Will he kick a cat or a dog? He won't do that. Right? That is what he is talking about. Which means he will see everyone equally. Which we saw this also. He sees everyone equally. Right? So that's what he says. Yeah. 13.29. One... One who sees the super soul in every living being and equal everywhere does not degrade himself by his mind. Thus, he approaches the transcendental destination. Hare Krishna. One who sees the super soul in every living being and equally everywhere does not degrade himself. Very clearly, he says he doesn't degrade himself. Thus, he approaches the transcendental destination. So, if he sees the super soul living entity, he doesn't degrade and he uh, approaches the transcendental. That's the final destination. 13.31. Sorry. One who can say that all activities are performed by body, which is created in material nature and sees that the self does nothing, actually sees. Hare Krishna. Very clearly telling. It's again, I'm not the body and the soul concept, right? He says one who can see that all activity, right? Whatever activity we are talking about are performed only by the body. And the body is created by what? The body is created automatically by the nature we have, right? Because if the body wants to oversleep, you get that. So it is only performed by the body. And sees that self. Self here refers to your own self, your soul. It has nothing, right? He is someone who can really see that. So you see, the driver is there. Based on that, this year you got a particular body. Right? So that body, so whatever, all the activities are just performed by the body. So the body will get up, go, eat, sleep, do everything. It just thinks that's okay. Right? doesn't matter. The body will just do generally whatever is required. And sees that, so, though they completely deal in themselves from the body. 13.33, Hare Krishna. The sky, due to its subtile nature, does not mix with anything, although it is all pervading. Similarly, the soul situated in Brahman vision does not mix with the body, though situated in that body. Hare Krishna. So you see the sky, you know, you see the horizon, right? It's a point which cuts the uh, sky and the uh, uh, sea. So this is the visuals, right? It gives you that feeling. But have you ever seen the sky going and mixing off and getting dilute or whatever with the water or the water getting mixed with the sky? Actually, no. Right? So that is what is called mirage. Similarly, the, um, uh, you know, the uh, soul, is separate, right? It does not mix with the body. It always stays on its own. So that's a speciality. Yes, come on. Please go ahead and do it. Yeah, please read. Ma'am? Yeah? Yeah, the, that line, the soul which is situated in Brahman vision means the other previous line. So, yeah, similarly, the soul situated in Brahman vision does not does not mix with the body means. So what they're telling is Brahman vision means somebody who understands who is that high-end person, right? Uttam Adhikari. For him, you don't have to bother much because he is the one who's already situated in that level. So, he, he knows he's not the body. So, he will not get too much worried about bodily pleasures or sadness. Someone's cold, you know, we get very sensitive. We will not bother. We will just think, okay, it's a different thing. They're just shouting at the body. I'm the soul. So, who understands that, um, you know, that level, that Vyani level, the concept, the Dhira, Uttama Adhikari, they fall under that category. Did I clarify? Okay, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, 
O son of Bharata, as the sun alone illuminates all this universe, so does the living entity, one within the body, illuminate the entire body by consciousness. A single sun, Hare Krishna. Single sun eliminates everything, right? So is the entire thing eliminating the entire body. So that's what Krishna says. And let's move on to 13.35. One who knowingly sees the difference between the body and the owner of the body and can understand the process of liberation from this bondage also attains to the supreme goal. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So says one who knows the difference between the body and I'm the owner, right? I'm the body, I'm not the soul. You know the makeup, right? The owner is a soul. Uh, in fact, the owner is actually super soul, like one our soul. So one who knows the difference, right, easily gets liberated, right? Because we've been seeing all this. So that's a special thing. The pillar is vision of knowledge, right? That's the end, which means that who understands so the knowledge gives you the vision to understand the concept, right? If the car goes and gets hit, on if the person dies, which will be more regretful, car or the uh, if the car gets condemned. So car also died, human also died. Which makes you feel very sad? The human death. Uh, why? Because you know very well that car is matter. Human has life because it's superior energy. So this particular chapter starts off with six questions as usual, some questioning. So 13.8 So he's going to give all questions and Krishna explains all that. And the description of Shetra and Shetra Gnya 13.27 Shetra Gnya Chapi Maam Bhitti Right? He's going to talk about what is Shetra, what is Shetranya. We saw everything, right? Soul, super soul, and the understanding them. Process of acquiring knowledge, right? Mai Chananya Yukena. How do you acquire the knowledge? Through proper disciplinary succession, which we saw in fact in the fourth chapter. Imam Parampara Pratam. So, Imam Rajashayo Vidu Saka Lentia Manasa Yokatas. Okay, forget that, but then going back to this. This is there in the fourth chapter, second shloka, 4.2. So there itself he is expressing that you need to have a, a proper source, right? So you have to follow the parampara concept. And jnanam, object of knowledge is sarvata pani padam ta. So you know jnanam, right? What is the object? Here the object and the objective should be Krishna. Otherwise it's not worth it at all. Naranam guna sangosha is talking about prakriti, which we talk about material nature, purusha, and union of both. And what is the village of, sorry, vision of knowledge? I just told Chetra, Chetra, Gnyaon, Evam, Antharam, Jnana, Chakshashu. Jnana, Chakshashu means vision, right? Uh, Chakshashu means vision. Jnana means, you know, mind or intelligence. So, Jnana, Chakshashu is a combo of that. Hare Krishna. So, with this, we end the 13th chapter. So, we summarize all this and tomorrow we'll see 14th chapter. Right? Any doubts, you can ask entering the first module. Let me just end the, uh, or tell the prayer. Vancha kalpa the Rukusha, the pass of Dubia Evacha, Patitana Pavani, Bio Vaishna, Bio Namukama, Hare Krishna, come on all of you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Krishna, do you see any doubts? Any doubts? No doubts? So, can we end the session today? Uh, all of, okay, ma'am. Can you, can you, I mean, you all can come only at three or you all can come a little early also? Yeah, we can, I can come a little early also. So anybody else? Uh, is it yes, difficult? Okay. Yes or no? I was just thinking if you all can come a little early, maybe we can start tomorrow's session with the story. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, sure. So thank you so much. And maybe so tomorrow we'll log in at uh, 2.50. I'll start with the story straight. Okay. Sure. sure. Oh, yeah. So chalo. Uh, so we'll again catch up uh, tomorrow. Ma'am, how can you we'll get the recorded session? Sorry? Re yeah. How can we get the recorded session? Because maybe before uh, some uh, beginning, at the beginning, we have got some of the recorded session as shared in the... Oh, yeah. Hare Krishna. Uh, Vrinda's class, I will ask him to forward. We'll have all that updated. So somehow another day or two, we'll have everything uploaded. Hopefully. Otherwise, okay. I'll get it up. Sure. Okay. Thank you. I want someone to chant. Today we are on the 13th chapter. 13 into 6 is what? 13 into 6? 78. 78. Thank you. So will one of you all chant 78 times? 
Mata ji, you chant, you chant because you have the beat. Sorry? You have the Japa Mala, you can count. Only Japa Mala, you can count and chant. I keep the Japa Mala because I'm used to that. But all of you can use any bead, pearl bead or whatever. Okay, I'll stop the session. We can uh, have the chanting session after the uh, uh, after this now, after I stop. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, loud and don't exit. We will chant now. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.